Region 3 is deprecated, so what do you use to replace it? Today, I'm going to show you the methods that replace Region 3 and make finding parts in an area so much easier. But before I show you them, if this video does help you guys in any way, please leave a like and subscribe. It helps the channel out a lot and I greatly appreciate it. But let's get on with the first method. Now, I'd like to note something also before I get started. Region 3 was not entirely deprecated, but its associated functions like find parts in Region 3 were deprecated in favor of the new Spatial Query API, so that's why I'm making this video. But there are three main methods you can use to find parts in an area, and the first one being get parts bound in box which returns an array of parts whose bounding boxes overlap a box that we can control. And so with the box, we can control the position where it's placed and the size of it. So we are going to insert a local script in our starter player scripts. And the first thing we are going to do is look at the function so workspace get parts bound in box and as you can see it takes a c frame which is the location of the center of the box and the size is a vector 3 that's just the size of the box and then we have a thing called overlap params so let's go ahead and make some variables for these so we're going to say the position will be equal to a c frame dot new actually it's kind of hard to understand we're going to say center and we're going to set that to be 0, 050 0, and then we're going to get the size of the box so size equal to vector dot create and we're going to make that 12 by 6 by 12 and then we're going to send that in here so center size and now let's take a look at overlap params this just basically allows us to whitelist or blacklist items from being able to be shown up from the array. So how we do this is we say overlap or we're just gonna say params is equal to overlap params and create a new one just like this. And then we're gonna say the filter type will be enum dot raycast filter type. So it uses the same as raycasting and we're gonna say exclude. So the parts that we send in for this next table will be excluded from the result. And so when we put our box at the center of the world, it's going to pick up the base plate and also the spawn location. So that's what we want to exclude from the result. So how we do that is we say params dot filter descendant instances will be equal to a new table. And in this table, we can also say game dot workspace wait for child base plate and game workspace wait for child spawn location so these two parts will not show up in our results and so that is the third thing we can pass here so params and like i said before this returns an array so we're going to say local parts is equal to this and it gets all those parts and then i'm going to print the parts to start out and so heading into your game, you can see that it printed out all of these parts and all of these parts are just all a part of my character model. So if we go in here, you can see there's all these parts and it picked up all of those. So now what we're going to do is put this in a wild true do loop just so it keeps giving us a result. So parts and then we're going to print the parts and then add a task.wait here just like that and then we'll see what this gives us so when we head into our game you can see that it's printing over and over again the parts that it's found which will be my character every time because i am currently in the area but if i leave the area and you can see that there are no longer any items in the table and if i walk back in then it detects that my character is in the area so pretty cool very simple just like that so now this next one is called get parts bound in a radius and it's basically the same thing as get parts bound in box except it checks parts in an area of a sphere instead of a box so let's go ahead and 
switch up our script if we type in workspace get parts bound in radius the first thing now is a position which is a vector 3 so this will be again the center of the sphere and then the radius is the how big or the radius of the sphere so get parts bound in radius we can send in a position like before so we're going to say position vector create this will be we're going to say 0, 050 0, and then we are going to get the radius which we will set as 10 just like that so then from here it's basically doing the same thing as we did last time so i'm just going to go ahead and type all this out again All right, so here is the similar layout to the function we had before with get part bound in box. And I think I forgot to mention that get part bound in radius also takes overlap params. So we can send in position, then our radius, and then we can see there is our overlap params or parameters, and we're gonna send in the variable we have up here. So there we go. So then as you can see, when we head into our game, it prints like it did before and as you can see it finds all of our character parts in there and if i were to leave the circle or radius then as you can see it stops printing now to actually look at this a little bit better we're going to visualize it so we are going to make a sphere part to just have a better understanding of the radius so we are going to head back in our script and up here I am going to make a new sphere part so instance.new parts and then I'll just type out all of the properties from here. All right, so here is our spheres properties and it's pretty basic, but something that might catch your guys' eye is in the size, we are setting the radius to be times two on the X, Y, and Z axis. So why are we doing this? Well, in Roblox, when you set a part size property, you're setting the diameter and not the radius. And so remember the diameter is the full width across the entire sphere. So if you want a sphere with a radius of 10 studs, you need to multiply it by two to get the diameter of 20. So that's why we take it times two. We're just converting from radius to diameter. And so the visual sphere matches the detection area from get parts bound and radius. So then if you head into your game, you guys can see that we have our sphere. And if we walk out, oh, I think I forgot something. Oh, yep. <laughs> All right. So I had forgot to add the sphere to the exclude list. So let's do that real quick. Add sphere. And so now, as we can see, it gets all of our character parts. But then if we walk out, there we go. Now it works. So walk in, finds our character parts, walk out and then we have an empty table. So that is the visual for get parts bound in radius. And if we were to switch up the radius 20, then it will stay the same just like that. So the last method I wanna go over is get parts in part. And so this does the same thing as the previous methods, but this one is more specific and accurate because it checks to see what parts are in another part, but it uses a full geometric collision check and uses the parts exact volume, making it more precise. And so as it says in the documentation, if you are just using simpler volumes, then use the two previous methods I've covered in the video as they are less accurate, but perform more efficiently. So this method doesn't perform as efficiently because it gets the exact volume of the part you are checking. So that is why. And so if you were using it, you would say workspace, 
get parts in part and then you would send in the part that you want to check for other parts in and then again there is the overlap parameters so as an example here i have this cone mesh we are going to use to test this method so let's go ahead and do that we are going to get the part so local cone is equal to game workspace cone and then same thing as before while true do throw in our cone i'm not going to send in overlap params because i don't think it'll pick up the base plate and spawn location so we're going to get the parts and then print parts task.wait so this doesn't crash the studio and then let's go ahead open up our output test the game doesn't detect the uh, base plate but if we go into it then there we go it detects our character and even if we jump out because it is so precise like that it stops printing for a second when we are no longer in the part and so that shows that this method is very accurate and takes in the object very precisely and so just as another example of using these methods here i have a crate mining system where i have our pickaxe and i can break this crate as you can see here and so how i'm detecting the hit is by using get parts in part and so you guys might be thinking that's kind of weird because the pickaxe is kind of small and might not work a lot of the time so that is why in the part in the pickaxe i actually use a hitbox around it and so here if i open the pickaxe up here is the hitbox that covers the tool that looks like that and so then you guys also might be wondering why am i using get parts in part if i only have a basic shape like a hitbox that I'm uh, detecting for. And so I'm using get part in part just because if I were to use uh, get part bound in box, I would have to update that parts position all the time. So wherever the character is with the tool, I would have to update that as well. So just having the hitbox and it automatically detecting where the hitbox is and sending the hitbox into the method, then it just makes my life a little bit easier because I don't have to keep updating the position of a box that I send in to get parts bound in box. And as you can see, it works very well and you don't even have to be 100% hitting the crate fully for it to be working. So it's just easier for me to work with and it's also just very nice. So here we go. And so yeah guys, this was today's video. If you guys did learn something from this video or you guys enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and the subscribe button. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.